Speaker, of course. Uh, any uh, declarations of uh, conflict of interest? None. We have no uh, uh, minutes to, re uh, to review, of course. We have one item on the agenda. It's up next, and who is delivering uh, the item? Rob? Yeah, I think so. Um, if we could try just to get my screen working, uh, if not, I'll email the, the presentation to someone there. Who, who should I email it to, just in case? I think Alex Forrest would be the one. Would it? Uh, anyone have a, a Pardon? Hey, you may wish to send that to Alan because she can likely upload that fairly. Uh, if, she, if, she, if she's at her uh, workstation, yeah. I'm sure she is. Good idea. Okay. She's just... Rob, you should no. try to put your screen. Oh, share your screen. I did send her the presenter's feed. You just te text what, sorry? You, you just need to share your screen. Yeah, it's still uh, not showing available yet. I'm going to send this to Alex just in case. Or to myself. Um, send it to Alan too, uh, Rob. Alan? Okay. Alan, Alan, Alan Canty. For your email address. And, uh, <clears throat> I think we need to get a mover and a seconder for the agenda and the minutes oh. from January 4th. Yeah. Okay. There's minutes from January the 4th? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. We, talk, we talked about the priorities? Yes, yeah. This has something to do with the priorities? Nope. So why would we be moving the priorities agenda? I'm sorry, minutes. We talked about the priorities after uh, board meeting, right? Because this is a plan and heritage standing committee meeting. Oh. This, is a stand, this is a standing committee meeting. This is just oh. so that the councillors and yourself right. might, are sitting on the committee with the oh. board members. I didn't realize meeting. that. I yeah. thought this was a presentation by CADC, and I was a, a loyal observer. Nope. Okay. It's a regular, it's a regular if that's meeting. the case, if that's the case, we do have minutes. Yep. We have meetings of January the 1st or the 4th? The 4th. January 4th. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to ask if you had a chance to review those minutes. I have them, and the, Ellen sent them out. Ellen, when did you send out the, the package? Last? Um, first of the week? Um, I think it was last Yeah, they were sent out last week, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any uh, discussion on the minutes of Councillor McCabe? I, I just oh, have. Sorry. Council I, Brad, or I just Brad. want to bring up under the priorities that Alex referred to oh, yes. at our January fourth meeting. I yes. just wanted to add, uh, Alex or Ellen, and Mr. Chair, if they could add inclusionary zoning as one of our priorities going forward. Okay, it could be. It could be added, uh, uh, Mr. Forbes. Yes, it can. Yeah. Thank okay. you, sir. That's okay. it. Councilor McCabe, anything to add? Councilor Yankoff is still in route. So, uh, do I have a mover of the minutes? Councilor Yankoff is here. Oh, are you there, uh, Councilor Yankoff? She's there, but she's I'm not here. on the I'm oh, here. Yeah, okay. I'm here. Councilor Yankoff, anything to add to the minutes? No, um, there, because it's just the minutes about what we talked about. I, I don't think we, we need to add things to them because they're, they're, they're just the minutes to what they we talked about, not about... Exactly about our priorities or additional priorities so yeah you're fine with me thank you no, but mr chair yes, that's, why I, that's why i just wanted to add it as a priority in yes. closing zoning we did did discuss it but it didn't get captured in the minutes yeah so uh uh councillor yankoff do you have an issue with that uh issue no not at all that's fine thank you okay so we're all on board do i have a seconder by the way I'll second or move by Councillor uh, Councillor McCabe. All those uh, any further discussion? Having none. none. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? I assume you're an aye, uh, Councillor Yankoff. Thank you. Okay. Where are we going now? We're still uh, trying to organize. This is going swimmingly well. <laughs> 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 Okay, 
Okay. Uh, are we uh, ready to go, Rob? Are you okay, Rob? Or Yeah, I think I'm ready to go now. You're ready to go? Okay. Yeah. No one should see anything other than what we've been seeing, right, uh, Alex? Yeah, we should be up. He's, he's got his presentation up there now, or at least it's okay. showing up on the screen. It says Rob is starting to share content. Yep. Okay. Should have it shortly. Okay. Et en français, on dit Rob commence à partager de contenu. Uh, <laughs> merci. De rien. Uh, yes, no. Was that a yes, no question? <laughs> that was the translation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if Aaron wants to give any background before I jump in. Assume that's a no then. Aaron, are you there? That's that's all right. I'll I'll just jump in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, thanks, gang, for the opportunity. I'm going to walk you through uh, a brief presentation that we did just before Christmas to uh, the steering committee. Um, so we've got a lot of the landowners, uh, Parks Canada, the Legislative Assembly, the um, uh, uh, individual property owners surrounding this proposed heritage district uh, that are, have been participating. And um, I, I'm not uh, the one that should be doing this presentation, but our, our team who's uh, leading this uh, is accepting an award for the Argyle Street project at the same time. So I'm going to walk through as best as I can. Um, just to kind of give you a sense of uh, our study area, we are looking at the uh, Queen Square block, uh, which is bounded by Grafton Street and Queen Street on one side, Church Street on the other, uh, and it goes down Great George and includes Sydney Street. So we're looking at uh, that as our general study area, and uh, we've been tasked with uh, looking at the public space improvements around this district. Um, and to some extent, so the private space uh, that our government owns as well. So um, I'm going to walk you through today what what we call uh, framework options, and they're very high level options that we have presented um, uh, to that steering committee. And this gives you guys an opportunity to provide some feedback as well. Um, but. Doug Coles on our team has also been corresponding with um, with city staff, um, and we've had a number of uh, more detailed conversations with city staff as well. But I, I think this presentation gives us a good opportunity. We're a couple of weeks out from uh, having a, a final plan for the area that uh, once that's prepared, we'll be uh, developing cost estimates and phasing and hopefully moving forward. Uh, with what we think the first phase of the project will be. So um, this process really, we, were, we commenced in uh, late September and um, we met some of you back, back in October. We held a, a two or three day uh, engagement session where we hosted uh, workshops with the business community, uh, with open public, and uh, we had one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, we did a walkabout of the district, and um, we we hosted uh, probably 20 different interviews with various stakeholders. As well, coming out of that session, we had an online survey. We had uh, 182 responses, so we had some good feedback. Uh, generally speaking, all in all, with the pandemic, uh, I think we had uh, some really good feedback that helped us move forward with these two framework options that I'll present to you today. Um, so, you know, from a business community's perspective, um, you know, the need for new street trees and urban forest, uh, improved landscaping and public spaces, uh, the need for public washrooms and sidewalk improvements. Um, various uh, seating and furnishing amenities, bike parking. Uh, there's a lot of discussion, as you can well imagine, about parking, as there always is in Charlottetown and every every downtown, that every uh, parking space is, is obviously sacred. Um, 
uh, the need for more uh, and expanded year-round activities and how can we expand the shoulder season. And, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion. <clears throat> we had presented the shared streets concept, um, which was proposed for Richmond and Sydney Street. And if, for any of you that have been to Argyle Street, uh, the shared uh, street concept really comes from um, Germany and the Netherlands. It's the idea that um, streets um, are shared equally between pedestrians and cars. Um, in the case of Argyle Street, you know, currently it is shut down on the weekends. Uh, it's, it's now permanently shut down, but uh, prior to the pandemic uh, for vehicles, it, it's been shut down. Prior to the pandemic, it was shut down for cars uh, on the weekends. And, and I'm suspecting uh, kind of coming out of the pandemic, uh, it's been very successfully received that this may be a long-term kind of pedestrian mall conversion. Um, with business access uh, early in the mornings so uh, they can do deliveries and garbage pickup and those sorts of things. Um, but through the day and through the evenings, it's, it's pedestrian. So um, we're anticipating, uh, we're designing it as a shared street as if cars and pedestrians will be there. Uh, but it remains to be seen what level of uh, access will be fully provided for, for vehicles. Um, the public workshop, we heard a lot about uh, the opportunities for new winter activities, for uh, arts, for obviously the cultural and heritage uh, aspects of this important district, um, the, the need for more accessible accessibility into the uh, Center for Arts, uh, flexible seating, there's a lot of dis discussion about uh, being a waterfront city and needing uh, some kind of water feature that would be uh, part of this plan. Um, need for sheltered warm areas, again, that's expanding the, sh the shoulder seating season. And not surprisingly, uh, kind of taking back some of the parking spaces to increase uh, sidewalks and, and public amenities. And there was even discussion about the type of materials and uh, need for improved pedestrian circulation. And a lot of this information, of course, was um, uh, confirmed with the individual interviews, but, um, you know, some of the individual landowners have their own uh, needs. Uh, of course, the, the Legislative Assembly is concerned uh, about safety and security. Uh, Parks Canada is, uh, you know, concerned about the um, uh, heritage nature of the site and making sure that we, we follow uh, national guidelines for, uh, for heritage design. And uh, a lot of the things that we heard in the public uh, workshops were just reiterated. And without getting into the detail of uh, kind of the online survey, uh, we're summarizing this, of course, all in the report, which uh, I assume many of you will have uh, access to. Um, I believe this won't be a public report, but maybe Aaron can comment on that, but it'll be uh, an internal working document uh, to kind of move forward with. Um, we had asked a number of questions about, you know, how frequently you use the area, how often do you visit, do you live or work in the area, and just to get a sense of uh, kind of the responses so we can categorize is what we hear based on who actually lives there, who works there, um, and other kind of ways to categorize the data. Um, so uh, less than half of the respondents thought the quality and experience of the current district was, was very good, and I'm sure some of that's reflective of the long-term renovations to Province House uh, and the fact that it hasn't been very accessible for a while. Um, but uh, it, as well, we looked, asked questions about what they would like to see uh, improved in the district and kind of the chart, this little step chart, you know, more uh, street trees and planting, better seating amenities, uh, more attractions for residents, better events and entertainment, uh, street theater, historic interpretation, all those sorts of things were all part of the responses. And uh, when we asked about priorities for improvement, um, you know, there was more specific 
Um, some said they'd li like to be able to skate in the district. Mm -hmm. um, some talked about a holiday uh, and craft markets. Um, some talked about fire pits uh, and they'd be able to, to kind of heat yourself in the winter. Uh, just a lot of emphasis on winter activities. But also as well, uh, some of the key themes that the public thought should be uh, recounted here. So uh, in Indigenous uh, representation, of course, public art, uh, quality, um, the Confederation theme, and public celebration. So our, our design and engineering team had gone through uh, a bit of a, an analysis. And of course, you, you guys know the district well, so I won't get into a whole lot of detail. Just to say that there are important uh, federal view corridors that are, are part of the Heritage District um, that need to be maintained to Province House. Um, we've got the solar gain and solar pass, so looking at the microclimate of the site um, throughout the different seasons and where we have sunlight and shade. Mm -hmm. Um, we look at the prevailing winds, so in the summer, the, the nice yellow bands there, uh, we've got generally a, a well-blocked area, and in the winter, the Confederation Center of the Arts uh, provides some shelter in the rear areas, but uh, helps to accelerate the wind around the fringes of those buildings, so we know we have to deal with that in the uh, future uh, design. We looked at things like zoning, uh, circulation through the site. So we took uh, drones out and we flew the site and kind of mapped where people were going. Um, we looked at where snow paths were uh, cutting through the site. Uh, we have, through the interviews uh, and through the walkabout, perceived uh, unsafe areas or areas that we need, need to deal with uh, safety and security. Um, we've done a traffic study uh, looking at the one-way and two-way nature of the streets and uh, any proposed changes to making um, either Richmond or Sydney or both streets uh, pedestrian only. How would that impact traffic patterns? So uh, our traffic engineers uh, have prepared a study that will be part of, uh, of the overall study. Um, we looked at, of course, your active transportation plans, the transit plans for the city, the uh, truck routes and access, and um, met with, um, uh, uh, with Mike with the transit uh, group to look at improvements, and those are reflected in the design. So part of a shared street design is a curbless profile for the street and that allows the maximum flexibility so we're essentially using trench drains to handle all the uh, drainage and uh, we have the same thing on Argyle Street this is the Place des Arts uh, in Montreal that did a shared street probably a year before Argyle Street so um, we were involved with the Argyle Street design and it gave us a good opportunity to, uh, to get to Montreal and learn about what works. What you'll notice in both Argyle and, uh, and in, in Montreal, this tactile strip, uh, this is for visually impaired people because uh, right now they, they use their uh, cane or devices to sense where the curbs are. So when the curbs are gone, we need these tactile strips so they know the difference between where the sidewalks are and where the street uh, is. And so that's integrated in, in any of these designs. Um, the opportunity for fountains can happen in these. And in the case of Halifax, we've tied uh, these uh, trench drains into uh, underground planters that feed the urban forest um, as well. So we're using that as part of the planting design. And so um, Coles and Doug's team have done a more detailed look at the hydrology of the design for a new curbless profile and how that would work. And uh, we've got uh, good confidence that that's going to be a, a good strategy for, uh, for the district. And I won't get into the details of that. If you have questions, we can, I think, I think Doug's on the, the line here. So once we uh, looked at the environmental context, we, we looked at theming uh, for the district and 
you know, we looked at the unique geological conditions, the um, uh, Acadian forest and the ecoregions of PEIs, potential themes. Uh, we looked at uh, first people themes and uh, the way to create more equity in the space uh, with, uh, you know, it currently has a, a colonial focus and how can we create greater a a equity uh, in the new space design. Um, we looked at uh, first settlers, so the Acadians and uh, European settlers uh, and that theme, as well as, uh, of course, the Confederation theme and looked at uh, kind of the interesting themes surrounding the mothers of Confederation. And of course, our, our team, which uh, includes the in-house archaeologists, uh, went back and did uh, a complete timeline of this space and looked at uh, archival photos, did a lot of research on the uh, Arthur Newbery Gardens uh, of the 1800s, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the, the changes and any of the ideas that we could take forward. So this notion of a, a water feature, uh, which was central to the Newbery Gardens, gets pulled into both concepts uh, that you'll see in the future. And so then we looked at how to draw those key narrative elements into, uh, into the overall design and develop some guiding principles that would lead us into uh, eventual design solutions, mostly around safety and security uh, and increasing uh, the accessibility of the space for uh, a wide grain, a range of users and responding to, to microclimate and history. Uh, and we looked at a broader definition of confederation, togetherness, and, and we took that uh, um, to mean uh, togetherness uh, for all users, all past histories of the site, and for all seasons. Um, so we developed two framework plans, which I'll show you now. Um, we've, since this time, since we presented this plan, We've done a lot more detailed work with the individual stakeholders. So um, we'll show you the two options today. Uh, and although we don't have the final concept plan to show you, we're kind of working towards that over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I can tell you where the groups have landed um, in decisions between these two options. Um, so very broadly speaking, we're going to get into the details. Um, We've looked at uh, kind of a, a less change type plan where we're keeping the uh, angled parking, we're doing some widening of the uh, sidewalks at the expense of some of the lane widths. Uh, in both options, we're, we're moving the uh, bus drops uh, to closer to intersections, which are safer rather than mid-block stops. And uh, in both options, we're creating uh, these shared streets on Victoria and Sydney Street. And in some, we're looking at kind of more central water features and more details around the Confederation Center of the Arts. Um, the CCA and Steve's team is also going through a parallel design process for major upgrades to the Confederation Center. And we have been working with their design team, uh, our friends, uh, another architecture firm here in Halifax, at uh, making sure that those uh, two plans are moving forward together and that uh, as the edges of the CCA touch the public open space that we are uh, making provisions for the future changes to, to the CCA. But if I walk through this, uh, this plan as we kind of zoom into some of these areas, um, we're looking uh, in this option at a shallow uh, kind of passive and contemplative water feature that would be central, more of a reflective uh, pool that the water, if we need it for uh, an event, can be drained and it's flush with the ground and we have uh, a very flexible space so it doesn't stay as water all year round. And we're looking at precedent imagery from other projects, and you'll, you'll notice these kind of black planes that uh, are purposely designed to reflect um, the symmetry um, that is, is the Parks Canada is trying to maintain with, uh, with Province House. 
Um, as well, we're looking at an LA garden. So we already have uh, a linden garden along the side, but it's uh, creating more uh, activity under the understory of that. And so, you know, here's what we have today. They're uh, just generally creating more activity, trying to uh, possibly thin those trees uh, as well to, to open up uh, the uh, septed principles and more security under the canopy. Excuse me, Rob. Uh, is everyone seeing Rob's screen here uh, on the monitor? Yes. I am not. It says Rob is starting to share content, but all I have is the black block here. But if I'm the only one, continue on. I'm just wondering if the other participants have access to the screen. Councilor Duffy, I, I had yes. the same. I had the same issue. And yes. uh, Rory, I think Rory's on with us. Are yes, you, you're in City Hall, so he'll just go down to your. Uh, Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Rob, go ahead. Yeah, no, sorry. I assumed everybody could see the screen, so it <laughs> makes it difficult to understand uh, what I'm showing. <laughs> so um, we had uh, some of our early designs had bled onto the CCA property, and uh, we've since been working with Mike's team to, um, or sorry, Steve's team. I keep saying Mike, uh, Steve's team to take some of that uh, uh, off to make room for what they're planning to do. Uh, we had planned uh, a more formal traditional gardens that would be uh, both kind of traditional colonial gardens and medicinal um, First Nations gardens as part of the interface between Province House and the uh, legislative library. And again, just uh, a look at some of those spaces and how we might uh, change and, and do some interventions to improve and make active uh, those, those areas. And um, again, this is the Acadian Forest Garden that was designed uh, with more kind of lo low scale, uh, more traditional gardens to re represent the regional native trees and understory plants uh, of, of Prince Edward Island. And, possibly with national focus around the edges so that we include kind of the national story and the, the provincial story. Um, Victoria Row, of course, in, in both options, we look at a curbless profile. And I think for a number of reasons, um, the current alignment of the street has the sidewalk right up against the buildings with the sidewalk cafes in the middle and the street. Uh, we've been working very closely with the fire department and emergency services to ensure that uh, we have an, a wide enough access so that if a fire truck needs to put down the outriggers that we have the space that's needed uh, for safety and security. And in doing that, like we did on uh, Argyle Street in Halifax and as they've done in Montreal, what it forces uh, you to do is to move the sidewalk cafes in closer to the edge. The sidewalk then uh, combines with the street so that you have the width of the sidewalk and the width of the street, uh, which the uh, emergency services needs. Um, so it's a slight change from the way it is today. And in this uh, option, we're showing a central um, trench drain that runs down essentially the middle of the street opportunity for some fountains in that trench drain to activate uh, uh, able to turn them on and off and uh, the way it works in Halifax is they go into a central storage chamber which is recirculated once a day so that we're not just wasting water which I have heard this do uh, in Charlottetown Back Ernie Morello and I a number of years ago had uh, put a fountain in one of the catch basins, and I understand that was a, an issue then. So uh, we get a sense down in the right-hand corner of how that could look and how it could uh, operate. And um, for Sydney Street, we're looking at uh, the opportunity to uh, reconfigure the parking lot to allow uh, the street to be mostly shut down for vehicle traffic, so we shut off from one end to the other, but the deliveries can happen. Uh, we can have delivery trucks in the morning come through, not have to back their way out onto George Street, 
but by reconfiguring the parking lot, we're not losing much parking, but it uh, provides a good loop uh, in and through and provides a little bit more space for the uh, landowners as well. I think in this option, there's a central alleyway. We had looked at created an, uh, an atrium in there, a really interesting uh, kind of public private space. But there's so many landowners that uh, we found that, that that was going to be difficult to achieve something like that. Rob, Rob yes, Rob, I just I, I, I just want to ask about this issue here because as the chief, prior chief McDonald and the deputy chief know that, do you have an exit, an entrance, and an egress off Sydney Street for this parking lot that's owned by Sean Murphy? Is that yes. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so how do the, how do the vehicles uh, go in? Like, enter and exit. Do they continue down the street? Like, I thought it was a pedestrian only. Yeah, it's p pedestrian only. But um, we would have uh, either removable, uh, collapsible bollards or bollards that retract down into the ground mm -hmm. um, for morning deliveries, um, or it could be a swing gate. Um, that's easily pushed by a vehicle that just uh, detracts regular traffic from moving through here. Um, but you can easily kind of push the gate with the nose of your vehicle uh, to have it open and then it shuts uh, after that. But for traffic and for parking in here, we, we've moved the entrance okay. of the parking down slightly. Right. And all of the parking has access. So you'd be in and out through the parking lot and you'd exit through the parking lot but the deliveries could happen kind of in and through the parking lot so entrance and uh, egress would be off great george street for the back for the vehicles parked in that parking lot correct yes that's right yeah okay thank you yeah. so we're still maintaining uh access to to both parking lots but um uh, Sean's parking lot kind of comes into two dead ends now and gets its access from Sydney Street. Yeah. Uh, the future realignment would, would have all of its access off of Great, Great George Street. Thank you. Um, and we're also looking, we think the overhead canopy here, kind of what's been done here could really be built up and be an art piece. Uh, so we're looking at, at Montreal and Europe and what they're doing with an, this really interesting art canopy. Uh, because the street's quite narrow here, we have some limitations for how um, sidewalk cafes can spill out and use that space. Um, that forces us to kind of look up at the canopy and how we can design that. Um, we've got opportunities to do some narrowing of Queen Street. Uh, so kind of moving the parking out into the lane just a little bit more, uh, but keeping the angled parking that allows us to, to get an, uh, some extra feet of width on the sidewalk. Uh, doing a, a much larger bump out at the corner, which creates shorter crossing distances. And of course, uh, wider um, along Grafton Street. And so we looked at different ways to kind of bring the, the elevated plaza down to street level right. as part of this design. Um, in both options too, we've relocated the bus stops, which are kind of located central. Uh, when we talked to the bus company, they were talking about the, the safety issues with people getting off the bus, crossing mid block and jumping on the next bus. And so in both options, we've moved uh, in, in this case, one bus stop down to the intersection of University Avenue, and you cross a signalized intersection, and the other one has moved down to uh, the Queen Street intersection. And as I just kind of move on to framework option B, um, it's a slightly different plan. Uh, we've reconfigured the park parking slightly to, to gain some more sidewalk space. Um, in this option, we looked at a more modern uh, design theme, but uh, in working with Parks Canada, they're looking for to maintain the symmetry of Province House. And so these kind of very rough, rugged edges, uh, they were not very keen on. Um, in this one, we had looked at just uh, ground level fountains that would spray up rather than a pool. And uh, I think we're moving more towards kind of a combined 
where we provide a reflective pool that can be easily drained. It's very shallow uh, so that you can use it for events, but you can also have these jets that are in the pool um, that can be used whether it's dry or, or wet. Uh, so something more akin to this, this one down here below. Uh, in this option, we had looked at uh, the opportunity to create a skating space in front of uh, Province House. I think there's um, potentially some pushback on, on that as well. It's a relatively small space, but uh, we'll continue to work with, with uh, the Legislative Assembly and Parks Canada on that option. And then there were some options around the edge, which, uh, you know, just to kind of keep the presentation short, we, we've kind of landed on option A for this area, keeping the alley and not doing anything up on the CCA area for now, because they'll be developing their own plans on their own property. Uh, but we do still have this alley garden that will be part of uh, this plan. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing anything around uh, Province House on this side. Um, there's some improvements that will come to Province House and some future kind of design work that will, will come on, on that property. So we had looked at a, a coastal botanic gardens uh, kind of feel uh, around Province House for this option. And um, I think we've just been asked to, to just kind of put that design work on hold. We looked at uh, some interesting options, an Acadian kitchen hearth uh, that would be part to bring the, the fire element um, that we heard so often in the public engagement uh, into this and to uh, bring life to some of these uh, rather cold plazas. And so just a couple of options. Uh, again, the CCA will be working on their own options uh, as part of this, but we're kind of backing off their pro property. Uh, but some of the ideas for the Indigenous Sculpture Gardens and the bringing art outside, um, they'll be carrying forward themselves as well. Um, some, some just different options for the uh, plazas that we looked at. Uh, in this one, we had looked at narrowing George Street and removing some of the parking to create a looped link uh, that didn't have parking all the way around the district. Um, I think, I, I can't remember how we landed, but we had looked at a rainwater garden and um, I, I think we have moved to leaving the existing Great George Street profile. There's a, uh, a heritage view plane that comes up from Great George that can't be interrupted. And so there's some worry about kind of moving the trees in narrower um, in this option. Just kind of shows the, uh, the rainwater and how that was proposed. Um, and in this one, we looked at uh, some other more modern design language. We had looked at uh, uh, changing the truck access to have 18 wheelers back straight into the Confederation Center. Um, and that was, uh, it turns out, will be a very expensive option to architecturally modify the CCA. And so we're going to maintain the uh, parking out front on Victoria Road for just the day of the event for load in and load out and then the 18 wheelers will move off the street. Uh, so this is all part of that more modern design language that I think uh, we're moving back towards a, a more traditional, still a modern language, but uh, a more um, balanced design. And um, Again, just some different options for Sydney Street. Uh, I guess in this option, we look at the long term that, that that parking lot is much better as a future infill building site with um, the parking put underground. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we, we all agree that long term that that's probably the best strategy. It's just uh, how long it takes to get there. And uh, just more options for uh, that overhead canopy and public art and and how different communities have, have dealt with that in a very creative way. Um, I guess in, in this option too, we're going a little bit further with the sidewalk widening, um, not so much on Queen Street, but uh, along Grafton Street, we've removed the uh, angled 45 degree parking. And um, I think that this is kind of the way that we're, we're landing. We're, we'll lose a bit of parking, but we're gonna pick up more parking 
on Church Street, so the overall count shouldn't change very much. But um, the CCA is looking for new, uh, brand new entrances right off of Crafton Street, rather than the current um, entrance off of the corner of, of Queen Street. And it'll be very wide open uh, entrances connected directly uh, to the space. So we need a lot more crush space, a lot more uh, area for uh, for people to gather as they come into the Confederation Center. So we've uh, significantly widened the sidewalk uh, along there. We've still, uh, in this option, we looked at kind of a central, maintaining the bus, but we have changed the bus uh, back to uh, right across the street at the University Avenue, uh, so we've got a safe crossing spot. And uh, we've got drop-off areas for the Center of Arts, but we still maintain some uh, parking along uh, that edge. And we haven't changed any of the north of Grafton Street. So those, uh, that's generally what we're looking at, some very substantial uh, improvements to uh, what I would believe, you know, next to the waterfront is one of the most important areas of the city. And I uh, just wanted to um, kind of shout out to CADC for quarterbacking this. Uh, it's, you know, we're try they're trying to manage a lot of stakeholders. Uh, and so it's a very, as you can imagine, difficult process to, uh, to get a win for everybody and for everybody to kind of understand what their neighbors need. So uh, we thought it was a good time to share it with this committee and gather any feedback. So I'll kind of end my presentation now and we'll take some questions. Hi, can I just say that look, uh, that looks really, really nice. Wow, it's a great job. I only have about five more m minutes before I have to get off because I have an appointment, but I just wanted to say I, I think that's really nice. Thank you. We're, we're all very excited. Rob? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Rob, uh, are you familiar? I know that Councillor Duffy and uh, Doug Coles would be familiar with the fountain that was on the north side of province house yep uh it was uh it was a rectangular pool actually it became a uh, swimming pool for downtown kids okay uh, mike you probably remember the the, the fountain yeah. that was in front yeah and yeah. Um, then then the confed center of parks canada just decided to make it more of a green area so that's why we had that green area in front of uh, or on the north side of the province house mm -hmm. and just another point of uh, uh, history the original design uh, rob of the confederation center the original design was that the main entrance was to be where the amphitheater is yes yeah. and the purpose of that uh, connection was to, to look on to the prov province house that was part of the uh, Charlottetown Conference, but the designers at the time said that in order to have parking, they'd have to tear down the Coles building, yes. which is the legislative library. That never happened. So that's why the entrance is on the corner of Queen and uh, Grafton Street. And, uh, you know, so some changes have been made over the last number of years. Yeah. But the, the water fountains that we're talking about I know that I've talked about a splash pads in the neighborhoods around the city. However, the blowback that we always get is that there are systems that you need. Someone must have their mic on. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's fixed. So, Rob, so the, the, the feedback that we're getting from uh, our bureaucracy here in City Hall is that the, the uh, the recycled water uh, requires a system that is quite costly, and you're probably familiar with it. Yeah. That's what happened to the fountain down there on Victoria Road. They shut it down be for two reasons, uh, water wastage and the, and the, yeah, and the, the water uh, recycling issue. Yeah. Uh, so on that, how do you, what, what plan do you have for these fountains that you envisioned uh, whether it's uh, the water feature that looks like, uh, I believe they're referred to as uh, infinity infinity pools. Yep. 
H- how do you address if you don't get the infinity pool? How do you get the the uh, what's the cost for the uh, the recycled fountains, the recycling of water, and and how do we instead of just using and wasting water, recycle the water? Yeah, so that that's uh, if you've been to the waterfront in Halifax, there's a small water fountain kind of right on the and and it uses the same uh, system where you have a cistern underground. Um, it's, it's not overly big, but it's big enough that the the water in it can be um, treated uh, so that it meets the safety guidelines for kind of touching it and uh, being in contact. And that's recirculated once a night. So uh, it's flushed out and the tanks uh, are filled up again. So it's uh, generally speaking, uh, wouldn't even be the same amount of water that uh, one household would uh, would go through in a day. So and it's, it's, it's recycled. pretty efficient. And it's recycled, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yep. I'll provide a little update for, for everybody on the parking lots and the church. Um, as you all know, there's two owners here. The church owns the bigger parking lot that the Legislative Assembly parks in. And then we have Sean Murphy with his two parking lots for his buildings that front onto Victoria Row. Um, through the process, the church was a little bit elusive and hesitant to come to the table and to engage. Um, I, I, there's a bit of fear on their part, I guess, that we're trying to get get that land away from them. Um, they're very concerned about maintaining it for their Sunday church services. Um, and, uh, and the flip side of that, how can we do any kind of projects on that when we don't own the land? Um, and I believe the Legislative Assembly has kind of a year-to-year agreement for parking. So on Monday next week, on myself, we'll be meeting with the church, and these are the, the topics that we're, will be top on the list is uh, perhaps CDC enters into a long-term lease with the church, that would then allow us to receive funding to do work on the parking lots and combine them and do all the things we're dreaming of for, for that area. Right. So that's kind of an update on what's going on with those lots. So, so Aaron, this is the place I'm interested in. I think you know that last year the city looked at the business owners on, or the merchants on Sydney Street to close that street uh, temporarily for uh, pedestrian traffic similar to Victoria Row, but fire had an issue with the, the width and and the traffic uh, coming down Sydney, turning into the parking lot, and then some of the owners thought that, well, we'll keep it open and then we'll go back up the one way. Uh, it's in, Rob, that, that entrance egress in Sydney uh, will only be used for deliveries and that's it. And that will allow us to widen the, the sidewalk without curbs to make yep. it a more pedestrian friendly, friendly uh, uh, merchant area. So uh, I don't know what the city, Aaron, can do to, to help out with uh, discussing this issue with the uh, St. Dunstan's uh, Basilica, uh, but uh, they do have a board of governors, and uh, that's probably who you, you will meet with. But they will remain to have their entrance and egress off Great George Street. The parking lot on the west side that's owned by Sean Murphy, that's where the issue is for, you know, for Sean's traffic. And he would have to make a link into the Basilica, St. Dunstan's Basilica Church parking lot to allow his, to allow the vehicles to leave his parking lot to go out, exit or enter uh, onto Great George Street. Yeah, that's right. So it's very important that we find a solution to that entrance egress off Sydney Street so that we can use the Sydney Street uh, um, street and sidewalks as a pedestrian uh, pedway or pedestrian uh, mall. Yep. Thank you, Worship. We're getting quite a nickel. I don't know what's going on. I think it's time that we depart. Uh, I'll end. Do you have anything to ask? I think it's Mike. Uh, Mike's. 
Uh, thank you, um, thank you, Chair. Um, no, I've seen uh, Rob had. I've been part of the other presentation in the beginning, and it's. I mean, when this all comes to fruition, I think it's going to be. A sh uh, it's just going to the downtown is just going to be incredible. So I'm quite excited as we progress through this process. So thank you. And Mr. Chair, just a last point. Uh, this this summer, as Councillor Yankov knows. This July or early fall, the new Charlottetown Learning Center will be opening. Uh, the place is on to Queen Street. So, Rob, that that will be part of the, the pedestrian mall that we're looking at to create the more accessibility. Accessibility and uh, to make it more open for users. That's great. Okay. And thank you for your presentation. Great presentation. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks. Can I just ask? Um, Back again, I had a technician help me here, Rory. So um, who was it? Was somebody adding uh, something to the conversation? I was just, it's Jessica. I was just going to oh, ask yeah. how, how I could share some feedback. Um, I think my email address is on, um, on that link. Uh, to the invite today. Okay. I have it as well, Jessica, if you need it. I yeah, under uh, rob.leblong. You can just send me some email. That would be great. Okay. Thanks so much. That's exciting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob, for your presentation. Uh, can we uh, move on to uh, new business? I don't think we have any, do we? Nope. Have you done a motion to adjourn? I can't see your hand. Uh, moved, uh, moved by uh, Philip Brown. <laughs> Thank you. A second by Elena Yankoff. All those in favor? Thank all you. Those opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Talk Thank you, you very much, Rob.